नमस्कार अ वॉम वेलकम टू वर्ल्ड न्यूज एंड इंडियन परस्पेक्टिव ऑन ऑल इंडिया रेडियो दिस इज गौरव शर्मा एंड विद मी इज आर एस रघु ब्रिंगिंग ग्लिम्स ऑफ द मेजर डिवेलपमेंट ऑफ द डे फ्रॉम अक्रॉस द ग्लोब ओवर द नेक्स्ट हाफ एन आवर वी शेल ब्रिंग यू द लेटेस्ट फ्रॉम द वर्ल्ड ऑफ पॉलिटिक्स इकोनॉमी स्पोर्ट्स एंटरटेनमेंट एंड मोर द हेडलाइंस Special campaign for ensuring covid appropriate behavior begins from Tuesday India's cumulative vaccination coverage nears 8 crore mark Russian foreign minister Sergey Lavrov arrives in New Delhi on a two day bilateral visit to India Friendly navies of India France Japan Australia and the USA participate in the La Perouse multilateral maritime exercise FDI inflow of 72.12 billion dollars during April 2020 to January 2021 in India the highest ever for the first 10 months of a financial year Vietnam's National Assembly confirms Pham Minh Chin as the next prime minister World's highest railway bridge the Chenab bridge gets completed in Jammu and Kashmir and in football India women's team loses to Uzbekistan in an international friendly match 0-1 in Tashkent As the number of covid cases are on the rise again we appeal to our listeners not to lower the guard follow all the precautions and all those about 45 years to get vaccinated without any hesitation stay safe and protected by following these three simple steps wear a face mask maintain two meters ki doori for social distancing and focus on hand and face hygiene and now the news in detail India is launching a special campaign for COVID-19 appropriate behavior on Tuesday. It will emphasize on 100% mask usage, personal hygiene and sanitation in public places, workplaces and health facilities. The special campaign will continue till the 14th of this month and comes in the wake of a recent spike in the coronavirus cases across the country. In the high level meeting chaired by the Prime Minister on Sunday, Indian Prime Minister Narendra Modi emphasized that awareness of the community and its involvement is paramount for sustainable COVID-19 management. Our correspondent has filed this report. Some of the main reasons for the rapid rise in COVID cases can be attributed to the severe decline in compliance of COVID appropriate behavior primarily in terms of use of masks and maintaining do gaj ki doori. Therefore, government is launching this special campaign to emphasize the need for COVID appropriate behavior in the coming days. For sustainable COVID-19 management, awareness and involvement of the community are paramount. There is a need to continue public participation and public movement for COVID-19 management. The five-fold strategy of testing, tracing, treatment, COVID appropriate behavior and vaccination would be effective in curbing the spread of the pandemic. With Anupam Mishra, Suparna Sekhya, IIR News, Delhi. Meanwhile, India's cumulative vaccination coverage is approaching the 8 crore mark. The Union Health Ministry said that more than 16 lakh 38,000 doses were given to the beneficiaries in the last 24 hours. A total number of 1 lakh 3,558 new cases have been reported in the country in the past 24 hours, taking the cumulative positive cases to over 1 crore 25 lakh. The country's COVID-19 recovery rate is at 92.8%. Now let us take a look at the coronavirus updates from around the world. The UK government has announced that everyone in England including those without symptoms will be able to take a free rapid COVID-19 test twice a week from the 9th of April. Rapid testing has so far been available to those most at risk and people who need to leave home for work including frontline NHS workers, care home staff and residents and school children and their families. The World Health Organization has called on global, national and local leaders to accelerate vaccine equity in every country, starting with health workers and those at highest risk for COVID-19. It called for vaccine manufacturers to scale up vaccine manufacturing and rejecting vaccine nationalism at every turn. The WHO also appealed to nations to prioritize supplying to Covax over new bilateral deals. Prime Minister Narendra Modi had earlier informed that India has provided 59 million doses to more than 70 countries including through Covax. The Covax is a global facility for pooled procurement and equitable distribution of COVID-19 vaccines. The government in the Philippines has extended a lockdown by another week on Monday after an alarming spike in coronavirus infections. In Australia, hundreds more family doctors are set to join the National Coronavirus Vaccination Program. According to reports, the rollout is gathering pace with the number of clinics taking part doubling to 3000 by the end of the week. 
In Germany, the health minister Jean Spahn has said people who have been fully vaccinated might soon be able to regain personal freedoms and return to a more ordinary life on Sunday. Portugal has reportedly reopened museums, cafe terraces and secondary schools nearly two months after tightening coronavirus restrictions. VC Pramod for AIR World News. Bangladesh entered a week-long lockdown on Monday morning to stem the spike in coronavirus cases. Report. The week-long countrywide lockdown started in Bangladesh today amid continuing surge in COVID-19 cases in the country. The response to lockdown in the capital city Dhaka was mixed even as the government stepped up efforts to enforce the lockdown. Police forces and rapid action battalion conducted a drive in Dhaka and imposed fines on people not wearing masks or flouting the health directives. Public transport in the country including buses, trains, waterways and domestic flights have been suspended but private cars and rickshaws continue to operate in Dhaka. Shops and malls are closed. Government and private offices have been directed to run with half of their employee strength but factories are open in shifts. Sporadic instances of protest against the lockdown were reported from Dhaka. Prime Minister Sheikh Hasina directed the authorities to roll out the second dose of COVID-19 vaccine from April 8 as per schedule. Cabinet Secretary Anwarul Khandakar has said that there is no problem with the stock of COVID-19 vaccine and Bangladesh will get the supply of the doses from India within the scheduled time. Meanwhile, the surge in COVID-19 cases continued in Bangladesh. On Monday, for the second consecutive day, more than 7,000 new coronavirus cases and 52 deaths were reported from the country. Rajesha, World News, All India Radio, Dhaka. Meanwhile, India has expressed grief at the tragic loss of life in a ferry incident in Narayan Ganj district in Bangladesh. External Affairs Ministry spokesperson Arinda Bhakchi expressed deepest condolences to the bereaved families and the government of Bangladesh. He said, in this moment of grief, country's thoughts and prayers are with the brotherly people of Bangladesh. As more and more people across the world get vaccinated against the coronavirus, the WHO has released an explainer to answer some of the common questions asked by people with respect to vaccination process. Responding to a question on how long after being vaccinated the immunity kicks in and the longevity of the effects, WHO's Dr. Catherine O'Brien said that a good immune response kicks in within two weeks of the first dose. The vaccines that we have right now are all two-dose vaccines. After the first dose, we see a good immune response that kicks in within about two weeks of that first dose. And it's really the second dose that then boosts that immune response. And we see immunity get even stronger after that second dose, again, within a shorter period of time after the second dose. We don't know yet how long immunity lasts from the vaccines that we have at hand right now. We're following people who have received vaccinations to find out whether or not their immune response is durable over time and the the length of time for which they're protected against disease. So we're really going to have to wait for time to pass to see just how long these vaccines last. Dr. O'Brien said that precautions need to be taken despite being vaccinated as we are yet to fully understand how the vaccine works. So we really need to continue these precautions while we're still learning about what the vaccines can do. Can they protect against getting infected and transmitting to someone else? And right now we're in a situation where there's still very broad transmission. In many countries, the transmission is just out of control. And so for how long we need to continue these precautions is really going to depend on what communities and countries can do to really crush this virus, to crush the transmission. And in that way, the vaccines can do their best job at preventing disease. But remember that we don't actually have the evidence for using the vaccine in some age groups. We don't have the evidence for use of vaccines in children, for instance. So for the time being, those age groups are going to continue to be at risk of both disease and infection and being able to transmit to other people. The second reason is that the vaccines are in short supply. So we don't have enough vaccine yet out in the community to protect everybody. Those are the reasons why we have to continue the precautions, especially the masking, the physical distancing, the hand washing, and not gathering in big groups. This is All India Radio giving you the world news. Three steps to stay protected and stay safe from COVID-19. Wear face mask, 
दो गज की दूरी टू मेंटेन सोशल डिस्टेंसिंग मेंटेन हैंड एंड फेस हाइजीन Russian Foreign Minister Sergey Lavrov arrives in New Delhi on a two-day bilateral visit to India. He will hold talks with the External Affairs Minister Dr. S. Jay Shankar on Tuesday. They will discuss issues of bilateral relations with an emphasis on implementation of outcomes of the Russian-Indian summit held in September 2019 in Vladivostok. They will also exchange views on important issues of international and regional interest including interaction in the United Nations, the SCO and BRICS as well as RIC. Russia has been a long-standing and time-tested partner of India. India-Russia ties have seen enhanced levels of cooperation in almost all areas including political, security, defense, trade and economy. Under the strategic partnership, several institutionalized dialogue mechanisms are working at both political and official levels to ensure regular interaction and follow-up on cooperation activities. The visit of the Russian foreign minister will provide an opportunity to discuss important aspects of bilateral the ties and review preparations for the next India Russia annual summit Vietnam's National Assembly has confirmed Pham Minh Chin a career security official as the next prime minister at an official ceremony on Monday the move completes the 5 yearly renewal of Vietnam's top 4 positions as it looks to maintain economic growth keep the coronavirus pandemic at bay and balance relations with Beijing and Washington China has been asserting its authority in the South China Sea while the US Treasury Department labeled Vietnam a currency manipulator in December due to its trade surplus with the United States and heavy foreign exchange market intervention to hold down the value of its dong currency. Chin was the sole nominee put forward by the ruling Communist Party for the post at a Congress earlier this year. He won 96.25% of the vote at Monday's National Assembly vote. Chin will replace former Prime Minister Nguyen Xuan Phuc, who was confirmed earlier on Monday as the country's new president, a largely ceremonial role. The Philippines has strongly condemned China over what it called China's expansive and illegitimate claims in the West Philippine Sea. In a statement, the Philippines Department of Foreign Affairs deplored the response by the Chinese embassy. A report. The Chinese embassy was responding to a statement by Philippines calling on Chinese vessels to leave the waters in the vicinity of the Yulia Philip Reef. Philippines said that the embassy statement contained blatant falsehoods such as claims of adverse weather conditions when there were none and the supposed non-existence of maritime militia vessels in the area. It added that the statement also attempted to promote the clearly false narrative of China's expansive and illegitimate claims in the West Philippine Sea. Yulia Philip Reef is located in the Spratly Islands of the West Philippine Sea. Philippines has stated that the reef is part of the Calayan Island group and lies in the exclusive economic zone of the Republic of the Philippines. The Department of Foreign Affairs has rejected China's assertion that Yulia Philip Reef and its waters are their traditional fishing grounds. It invoked the United Nations Convention on the Law of the Sea, UNCLOS, to which both Philippines and China are parties and said that China's actions are in contravention to UNCLOS Philippines reiterated the demand of its Secretary of National Defense that China immediately withdraw its fishing vessels and maritime assets in the area and vicinity of the Yulia Philip Reef and in the Philippines maritime zones We see promote for AIR World News In Indonesia flash floods and landslides have hit the island nation and neighboring East Timor over the weekend Floods have reportedly killed over 100 people with dozens more still missing as on Monday. Rescue efforts are expected to be hampered as the tropical cyclone behind the damage is expected to continue impacting the area for several days. Indonesian President Joko Widodo has offered his deepest condolences to the victims and those who had lost their homes. Indonesia's weather agency has said the storm's intensity could strengthen over the next 24 hours. prompting more heavy rain and strong winds. Envoys of Turkey, France, Italy, the UK and the Foreign Minister of Taiwan were among the ones extending condolences over the dastardly attack on security forces by left-wing extremists in the central Indian state of Chhattisgarh on Sunday. 
22 security personnel were martyred in the Maoist attack in the Jagargunda area on the borders of Sukma Bijapur districts on Sunday. The British High Commissioner to India, Alex Ellis, in a tweet expressed condolences for the losses suffered by the security personnel in the Chhattisgarh attack. He also wished for the swift recovery of the wounded. He added that the UK will continue to work with India in the fight against terrorism. French ambassador to India Emmanuel Luna expressed heartfelt condolences for the losses suffered by the security personnel in Chhattisgarh. In a tweet he said that France stands with India in the fight against te- terrorism in all its forms. Israel's Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu expre- appeared in court for his corruption trial on Monday. Netanyahu was ordered to appear for the opening arguments in his trial in the Jerusalem District Court. The Prime Minister has been charged with accepting improper gifts and seeking to trade regulatory favors with media moguls in exchange for positive coverage. According to reports, Mr. Netanyahu has denied any wrongdoing in this case. Netanyahu's right-wing Likud party finished first in Israel's March 23rd election. However, the vote was inconclusive as the party won merely 30 seats in the 120 member parliament. The trial enters a more intensive evidentiary phase on Monday, but a ruling is still several months off. Russia announced on Monday that it would extend a punitive slowdown of Twitter until the 15th of May. In a statement on Russia's state communications watchdog Roskom Nadzor said that Twitter had held talks with Russian authorities on the 1st of April. It said that the talks resulted in an agreement to give Twitter more time. Russian authorities also recognized that banned content was being deleted quicker by the microblogging platform. Roskom Nadzor said on that an that on average Twitter was removing illegal content within 81 hours of receiving a request however it is still much longer than the 24 hours demanded in law russia has since march impeded the speed of twitter for not removing content it deems illegal and threatened to block it entirely photos and videos take longer to load for some users this is all india radio giving you the world news Prime Minister of India Narendra Modi has lauded the completion of arch closure of the Chenab bridge. The bridge is the world's highest railway bridge and lies in the Union territory of Jammu. In a tweet Mr Modi said that capability and trust of the countrymen is setting an example before the world. He added that the feat showcases the growing prowess of India in the field of modern engineering and technology. A report. The bridge will be able to withstand earthquakes with a magnitude of up to 8 and high intensity blasts. Now after the arch is completed a train from Kanyakumari can now reach to Kashmir uninterrupted steel was specifically chosen for the construction of the bridge the metal can resist temperatures of minus 20 degree celsius and wind speeds of about 200 km per hour rain thunderstorms landslides and even snowfall have stopped work regularly but after years now the engineering marvel is ready and surely it will give a boost to the tourism industry 359 meters below the arch flows the chenab so bhagyakar air news For the first time India is participating in multilateral maritime exercise being held in La Perouse from Monday the 5th of April to the 7th of April. Indian Navy ships INS Satpura and INS Kiltan along with PAI long range maritime patrol aircraft are participating in the exercise being conducted in the eastern indian ocean region the indian navy ships and the aircraft will exercise at sea with ships and aircraft of the french navy the royal australian navy the japan maritime self defense force and the united states navy during the 3 day exercise at sea Exercise La Perouse will witness complex and advanced naval operations including surface warfare, anti-air warfare and air defense exercises, weapon firing exercises, cross-deck flying operations, tactical maneuvers and seamanship evolutions such as replenishment at sea. In a statement the Indian Navy said that the exercise will showcase high levels of synergy, coordination and interoperability between the friendly navies. Participation by the Indian Navy in the exercise demonstrates the shared values with friendly navies ensuring freedom of seas and commitment to an open inclusive Indo-Pacific and a rules-based international order. The 5th of April, a landmark date in the navigation history of India, is celebrated every year as the National Maritime Day. The Ministry of Ports 
Shipping and Waterways celebrated 58th National Maritime Day in commemoration of the maiden voyage of the first Indian flag merchant vessel SS Loyalty from Mumbai to London on the 5th of April 1919. The theme of National Maritime Day is Sustainable Shipping Beyond COVID-19 on the lines of Atm Nirbhar Bharat, the initiative of the Government of India. On the occasion of the celebration of the National Maritime Day, Mr. Mansook Mandavia, Minister of State for Ports, Shipping and Waterways congratulated the maritime community and appreciated their hard work, zeal and courage and role played in the times of the COVID pandemic. Mr. Mandavia said that Maritime India Vision 2030, recently launched by Prime Minister of India, is the comprehensive vision of the next decade for the maritime sector of India and with a focused approach, the Indian maritime sector will be strong, technologically advanced and atnirbhar soon. External Affairs Ministry spokesperson Arindam Bakhti said that the organizers of Rai Sena Dialogue 2021 have decided to host this year's edition as a fully digital event instead of the hybrid event planned earlier. The Observer Research Foundation and the External Affairs Ministry which jointly organized the Rai Sena Dialogue had earlier planned to hold the event with limited in-person attendance of around 100 people including foreign dignitaries in New Delhi scheduled to be held in next week. Mr. Bakhti said the decision to move a fully digital version was made as a measure of abundant caution given the COVID-19 situation in various parts of the world. The spokesperson said it underlines the strong sense of responsibility that the organizers feel towards the safety of all those involved with the dialogue. The Election Commission of India will organize the International Virtual Election Visitors Program, IEVP 2021, for Foreign Election Management Bodies, EMBP, EMBS, and organizations from Monday during the ongoing assembly elections in Assam, Kerala, Puducherry, Tamil Nadu, and West Bengal. Over 106 delegates from more than 26 countries across the world are participating in the two-day program. They include Afghanistan, Australia, Bangladesh, Bhutan, Malaysia, Maldives, Mauritius, Mongolia, Nepal, Russia and South Africa. The Sensex and the Nifty today fell more than 1.5%. The Sensex Bombay Stock Exchange finished below the 49,500 mark, while the Nifty at National Stock Exchange settled below the 14,700 level. A report from the Business World. Sensex declined 871 points or 1.74% to end at 49,159. Nifty at the National Stock Exchange also slipped 230 points or 1.54% to close at 14,638. In the global equity market, Asian stock markets today logged gains. Singapore's Straits Times climbed 0.9% and Japan's Nikkei 225 gained 0.8%, while South Korea's Kospi added 0.3%. Equity markets in Shanghai and Hong Kong remained closed for holidays along with European stocks. Oil prices fell more than 2.5% amid rising supply from OPEC plus countries. Higher Iranian output also impacted the crude prices. In intraday trade, the Brent was trading around $63.30 per barrel. And back home, gold prices fell 90 rupees per 10 gram at multi commodity exchange for April contracts. Gold futures were trading around 45,330 rupees per 10 grams. Silver futures also declined 50 rupees to trade at around 65,040 rupees per kilogram for May contracts. And the rupee at the foreign exchange market appreciated marginally by 2 paise to 73 rupees and 30 paise against the US dollar. Nishit Kumar for World News, All India Radio. India has attracted a total FDI inflow of $72.12 billion during April 2020 to January 2021. It is the highest ever for the first 10 months of a financial year and 15% higher compared to the first 10 months of 2019-2020. Measures taken by the government on FDI policy reforms, investment facilitation and ease of doing business have resulted in increased FDI inflows. FDI equity inflow grew by 28% in the first 10 months of 2020-21 compared to the year-ago period. Singapore is the top investor of the country with 30.28% of the total FDI equity inflow followed by the US and the UAE for the first 10 months of 2020-21. Japan has been leading the list of investors countries with 29.09% of the total FDI equity Inflows during January this year followed by Singapore and the U.S. Computer software and hardware has emerged as a stock sector during the first 10 months of 2020-21.
India's health minister Dr Harsh Vardhan virtually launched the integrated health information platform in New Delhi on Monday. The integrated health information platform is the next generation highly refined version of the presently used integrated disease surveillance program. Dr Harsh Vardhan stated that India is the first country in the world to adopt such an advanced disease surveillance system. He said this day shall be written in golden letters as a day that marks a milestone in the history of disease surveillance. He elaborated on the timely need for the software platform the new version will house the data entry and management for india's disease surveillance program in addition to tracking 33 diseases now as compared to the earlier 18 it shall ensure near real time data in digital mode india's defense research and development organization drdo has developed an advanced shaft technology to Safeguard naval ships against enemy missile attack. A DRDO laboratory in Jodhpur has indigenously developed three variants of this critical technology named short range shaft rocket, medium range shaft rocket and long range shaft rocket meeting Indian Navy's qualitative requirements. Shaft is a passive expandable electronic countermeasure technology used worldwide to protect naval ships from enemy's radar and radio frequency missile seekers. Moving on to sports in women's football Uzbekistan defeated India 1-0 in an international friendly match played at Olmolik in Tashkent as part of its preparations for the 2022 AFC Women's Asian Cup ranked 55 in the first update of the FIFA Women's World Ranking in 2020 the Indian women's team is the reigning champion in the South Asian region winning all five editions of the SAF Women's Championship started in 2010. The team has also won the gold medal on three occasions at the South Asian Games in 2010, 2016 and 2019. In football, Manchester United beat Brighton 2-1 in their Sunday evening Premier League encounter. Newcastle drew 2-2 with Tottenham at St James Park. Meanwhile, in the Spanish La Liga, Sevilla beat Atletico Madrid 1-0. Now let us take a look at the major developments around the world as reported in the foreign press. Washington Post writes that Joe Biden's plan to rev up the electric car market is complicated by battery supplies. Wall Street Journal reports that the US Supreme Court rules in favor of Google in a multi-billion dollar copyright battle with Oracle. The Guardian writes that Germany faces calls for nationwide approach to COVID restrictions. Globe and the Mail write that Toronto law firm's data show progress on narrowing gender pay equity gap. Globe and the Mail also report that Canada to receive nearly 2.2 million more COVID-19 vaccine doses this week as cases spike. And Washington Post says that Stanford hangs on to beat Arizona. win its first NCAA women's basketball title since 1992 now a quick look at the headlines once again special campaign for ensuring covid appropriate behavior begins from tuesday india's cumulative vaccination cover near coverage nears 8 crore mark russian foreign minister sergey lavrov arrives in new delhi on a two day by lateral visit to india Friendly navies of India, France, Japan, Australia and the USA participate in the La Perouse multilateral maritime exercise. FDI inflow of 72.12 billion dollars during April 2020 to January 2021 in India, the highest ever for the first 10 months of a financial year. Vietnam's National Assembly confirms Pha Minh Chin as the next prime minister. World's highest railway bridge the Chenab bridge gets completed in Jammu and Kashmir and in football India women's team loses to Uzbekistan in an international friendly match 0-1 in Tashkent India is celebrating the 151st birth anniversary of Mahatma Gandhi before we end let us listen to his favorite bhajan Vaishnav Jan by artists from Sweden Vaishnav Jan
And with that, we end this bulletin. See you at the same time tomorrow with the next edition of World News. Thank you.